Okay, class. Good evening. So now, uh, this will be the first topic of the final. So let's start. Uh, let's discuss obligations of the vendee. So here, uh, obligations of the vendee uh, starts at the Article fifteen eighty two. So what are the obligations of the vendee? Let me read it to you. Article fifteen eighty two. Uh, the ben the vendee is bound to accept delivery and to pay the price of the thing sold at the time and place stipulated in the contract. That will be the first paragraph. Second paragraph. If the time and place should not have been stipulated, the payment must be made at the time and place of the delivery of the thing sold. So, digest natin. Number one obligations of the vendee is to accept the delivery. So, uh, self-explanatory naman and by the way class this topic is uh, simplihan lang natin uh, it's because uh, syempre uh, if you are the buyer so ano yung mga obligations mo unang una to accept the delivery next uh, when buyer deemed to have accepted the goods so kailan mga masasabi na inaccept na ng uh, buyer ang goods so yan naman talaga yung sa batas class it's because dapat clear sa batas kung what will be the rules so, syempre, meron ding, uh, there are also rules in accept, accepting or how you determine kung inaccept na ni buyer yung goods na diniliver ni seller. Number one, when he intimates to the seller that he is accepting accepting them. Syempre, uh, arm's length transactions. Ibig sabihin, uh, diniliver ni seller uh, in an arm's length transactions ang goods to the buyer. Number two, when he does not a when he does any act in relation to the goods which is inconsistent with the ownership of the seller. So uh, number number two class is inaccept na daw ni buyer kung yung let's say for example yung goods is pagkain or di kaya perishes goods. So walang imex si buyer during the time of delivery ni seller walang imex si buyer so but kinuha niya lang yung goods from the possession of the seller so that is uh, tantamount to acceptance next does the buyer is deemed to have accepted the goods if he begins to consume them or give them to others so especially sa mga uh, pagkain or foods or di kaya uh, perish uh, perishable goods that's for example pagkain so nag deliver nag let's say for example uh, food panda so, sa food panda, siyempre may delivery yan. So, i-deliver na ngayon ni uh, uh, food panda yung pagkain kay buyer. So, if he begin to consume, or okay, pinamigay na sa ibang tao, aside dun sa seller, so, that is deemed to have been accepted the goods. Number three, when he retains the goods after the lapse of a reasonable time without intimating to the seller that he has rejected them. So, dito naman class sa number 3 is uh, wala siyang sinabi kay hindi siya nag-assert ng effort kay seller na uh, or hindi, niya nag, hindi siya nag-communicate kay seller na ina-accept niya na yung goods. But, uh, because of this reasonable time na nakalagay sa batas, nag na. So, it is deemed to be an uh, goods accept acceptance. It is deemed to have been accepted lahat ng goods. Next, letter B, delivery of goods in installment. So, ano yung magiging rules natin sa delivery of goods in installment? So, as a general rule, the buyer is not bound to accept delivery of the goods in installments unless otherwise agreed. This is consistent with the rule that the payment of performance must be complete. So, take note class, ang sinasabi sa Article 1583, uh, general rule si buyer is in uh, he, he is not bound or wala siyang duty or wala siyang obligation to accept that delivery of the goods which is in installment so just like for example sa mga lupa so since si seller uh, nag deliver niya ngayon kay buyer yung title dun sa buyer which is in installment so pwede hindi mo na i-accept ni buyer yung general rule yan class ha Pero syempre naman, every time na bibili tayo and then installments, syempre, we will take the possession of the goods. It's because, this, ito yung rule class, oh. So, dapat, bayaran mo muna lahat, 
bago mo kunin yung goods or i-accept yung goods. So, that is general rule. Siyempre, there are so many exemptions there. So, if there is a stipulation that the seller makes defective deliveries in respect of one or more installments or the buyer neglects or refuses refuses without just cause to take delivery or pay one or more installment, the injured party may depending upon the circumstances of the case. So, here class, uh, ang sinasabi dito kasi is installment, hindi ba? So, eh, what if si buyer uh, neglects or refuse or without just cause or walang karason-rason, hindi niya uh, tinake yung delivery. So, injured party or the aggrieved party may Number one, refuse to proceed further with the contract and sue for damage for breach of the entire contract. So, this is available on the part of the seller. Two, claim compensation but not damages if breach is severable. So, according to Article 1583. Next, right of buyer to examine the goods. So, right of buyer to examine the goods before accept accepting them. So, anong sinasabi dito class? Third, uh, third right of the buyer. General rule, the buyer has the right to examine the goods before accept, accepting them. So, general rule yan class, ha? So, ibig sabihin, si buyer, before niya tatanggapin yung deliver sa kanya, so, dapat i-examine niya muna kung uh, in stable or good condition, gumagana ba, or di kaya in terms of pagkain, hindi ba panis, or di kaya hindi sira, so, siyempre, uh, rights yun available on the buyer. Exemptions. Such right is not available in the following cases. So, siyempre, exemptions. May may exemptions yan. Number one, when there is agreement to that effect. So, kapag may agreement yung both parties, the seller and the buyer, na uh, si buyer has no right to examine the goods. So, dapat i-accept kagad ni buyer yung goods. Then, number two, when there is a stipulation that the goods shall not be delivered to the buyer until he has paid the price such as when the goods are marked with the words collect on delivery unless there is an agreement or usage of trade permitting such examination. So, ang sinasabi sa Article 1584 class, may, may stipulation sila, may agreement silang dalawa. And then, pero sabi ni seller, hindi mo na i-deliver yung goods kay buyer hanggang hindi niya ma-fully paid yung price. Naintindihan? And then, at the same time, merong nakatatak doon sa goods na collect on delivery. Pero, this num itong number 2 class, may exemptions pa. So, agreement or usage. Ibig sabihin class, kahit pa daw hindi ma-fully paid ni buyer yung price, so, pwedeng i-deliver na kay buyer yung goods naintindihan. So, unless there is an agreement or usage of trade permitting such examination, uh, ito class is bagay dun sa uh, sale on trial. So, di ba sa sale on trial, uh, yung possession or the control or possession of the goods is hindi matatransfer dun kay uh, buyer. Di ba? So, syempre, before matransfer yung possession or the ownership, itry mo muna ni buyer yung goods. So, ito is for exactly for uh, best example for sale on trial. Next, number 4, uh, I, letter D, uh, or the number 4 obligations of the vendor, I vendi. Effect of acceptance of goods on seller's liability for breach of warranty. So, what if class uh, may acceptance na nangyari and then, pero, Merong breach of warranty, especially sa breach of warranty against hidden defects and uh, breach of uh, warranty against eviction. So, general rule, the seller is not discharged from liability in damage or other remedy for breach of warranty by the acceptance of the goods. So, here class, in the general rule, so, syempre naman, so, syempre naman class, uh, what if, uh, siyempre, uh, this general rule uh, What if yung ebenenta ni seller is may sira So, siyempre, the seller is not discharged Or hindi siya makakawala dun sa liability in damages But there is a 
exemptions, the seller is charged from liability in the following cases. Number one, if there is an agreement, whether expressed or implied. So, here class, ang sinasabi dito, general rule, may, kas, may uh, liability si seller kahit na tapos na yung uh, transfer ng ownership. Naintindihan? Pero exemption, wala ng kasalanan or wala, hindi na liable si seller if there is an agreement, whether expressed or implied. Number two, if the buyer fails to give notice to the seller of any breach of warranty within a reasonable time after buyer knows or ought to know of such breach. So, ang sinasabi sa Article 1586 class, may sira nga. Let's say for example, meron, na, meron ngang sira yung goods or di kaya... Uh, na depreciate or di kaya let's say for example uh, um, hidden defects so ibig sabihin uh, pero si buyer dapat he has the obligation to give notice sabihin mo kay seller seller may sira yung ibinenta mo sa akin so dapat ipaalam mo kay seller within reasonable time so failure to do ibig sabihin si seller madidischarge sa liability Next, fifth effect when the buyer refuses to accept delivery. So, ano yung magiging epekto sa contract kung si buyer hindi niya inaccept yung delivery? Number one, if refusal to accept delivery is justified. So, ibig sabihin, uh, justifi may justification si buyer. Well, hindi ko yan tatanggapin. So, such as when the quantity is not complete or the goods delivered being delivered are different from those stipulated. Ibig sabihin dito class, uh, 500 sacks yung binili ni buyer. Ngayon, ang dineliver lang is 450. So, pwede mag-refuse doon sa refusal ng acceptance si buyer. So, ano yung magiging rules dito, class? So, what will be the rules here in uh, refusal? So, sabi daw, Letter A, buyer has no duty to return the goods to the seller unless otherwise agreed. So, yun yung sinasabi ng Article 1587. Next, letter B, title to the goods does not pass on to him. So, ibig sabihin class, uh, yung title or the ownership hindi mapapasa kay buyer. Siyempre, he shall not oblige to pay the price. Siyempre naman, since yung title or the ownership hindi napasa kay buyer, he is not bound to pay the price. Letter D, if he constitute himself as depository of the goods, he shall be liable as such. So, ibig sabihin class, let's say for example, a uh, seller, may sira yung i-deliver mo sa akin, but dito muna. So, siyempre, si buyer is liable to pay the price. Next will be obligations of the buyer. So, what will be the obligations of the buyer? It is sufficient that the buyer notice, notifies the seller that he refused to accept the goods so that the seller can take possession on them. So, dito class, uh, ang sinasabi diba sa letter E, uh, ano yung magiging epekto kapag hindi tinanggap ni buyer yung goods? So, dapat si buyer notifies the seller. Para naman sa ganon, malaman ni seller and then uh, the seller can take action on them. So, babawi ni seller yung mga goods on the buyer. So, yun yung sinasabi ng Article 1587. Number two, so if refusal to accept, deli accept delivery is not justified, ibig sabihin, uh, wala, uh, there are no reason so para hindi mo tanggapin yung delivery. Title to the goods passes to the buyer from the moment of the goods are placed at his disposal. So, yung title or the ownership will be transferred to the buyer. Except, so number one, when there is a stipulation to the contrary. So, hindi matatransfer yung ownership kay buyer if there is a stipulation or agreement. Number two, when the seller has reserved the ownership of the goods as a security for the payment of the price. So, sinasabi sa number 2, uh, hindi matatransfer yung ownership kung hindi makabayad ng full payment ng price yung buyer. And then, B, 